Hey everyone, welcome back to First Hand Globetrotting. If you're trying to plan an all-inclusive beach vacation down to some beautiful sunny destination, it can be really hard to figure out what resort will be the best for you. I know when I was planning my trip to Mexico, I spent hours and hours looking at all of my options and trying to figure out what the differences were. Nearly every resort tried to make itself look like the best, so it was hard trying to figure out which ones were actually good and which ones just had good marketing. In the end, I chose the Barcelo Maya Grand Resort along the Riviera Maya, Mexico. So in these videos, I'll give you my first-hand experience staying here so you can see if it's the right spot for you. It's a huge resort made up of six different hotels, so I've broken things down into a few parts since there was so much to cover. In this video, I'll show you some of the places of interest on the resort, some of the unique amenities it has, and some of the activities you can do while you're here. As I said, this resort was huge, and it was way more than just some hotel buildings and pools. It seemed like the more I walked around, the more cool stuff I was finding. But the other parts of this video series cover a lot too. In my first video, I showed you where the resort is, talked about all of the different hotels, showed you what they look like, and took you on a tour of my room. In part two, I took you on a walk down the resort's beach, which is over a mile long, and showed you the huge pools that each hotel has. Part three was all about the food. The resort has buffets with different theme nights, beach grills, a la carte restaurants, and snack bars, so there's a lot of options. And in part four, I showed you all of the bars, entertainment, and nightlife that the Barcelo Maya has. In other parts, I'll show you some of the water activities you can do while you're here and talk about some of the fun day trips in case you want to get off resort and see more of Mexico. Links to all of the other videos are down in the video description. The Barcelo Maya Grand is made up of six different hotels, and depending on which one you stay at, you get free access to some of the other hotels. I stayed at one of the four entry-level hotels, so that meant I got access to all four of those hotels, Tropical, Colonial, Carib, and Beach. But I couldn't use either of the two higher-end hotels, Palace or Riviera. So this video is going to focus exclusively on what you can expect at the four entry-level hotels, since that's all I got to experience firsthand. That should cover most people staying at the Barcelo Maya, and even if you're staying at the Palace or Riviera, you can still use all of the things I'm showing you here today. But enough with the intro, let me show you around the Barcelo Maya Grand. One of the places you'll definitely end up visiting is the Maya Mall. They have free Wi-Fi there in the afternoon, but other than a few people checking their messages, it's mostly a ghost town during the day. I think it goes to show how big the Barcelo Maya is since they have enough room to have their own mall on the resort. To really get the full Maya mall experience, make sure to come back at night when things start to get interesting. The first thing you'll notice is that the stores are actually open now, the lights are on, music is playing, and there are people wandering around having a good time. It's pretty much right in the center of the resort, between the Plaza Mexicana, which I'll show you later, and the Carib Hotel, making a little shopping district. I found the stores here seemed more trendy compared to a lot of the other stalls and shops around the resort, in case you're looking for a slightly fancier shopping experience. So if you're looking to buy some things while you're here, you don't even have to leave the resort. One of the reasons it's more lively here at night is because they have a live DJ playing music, which I really liked. And if you're here with teenagers, the mall has one disco club for them to hang out in for some nightlife. Two of the restaurants I showed you in my food video, Tokyo and La Trattoria, are in the Maya Mall, so you'll see lots of people coming here for dinner in the evenings. And one of the lobby bars I showed you in my nightlife video, the Mall Bar, is here too. So if you're looking to grab a drink before dinner, after dinner, or while you're out doing some shopping, this is a great spot to stop and relax for a while. The Barcelo Maya is an all-inclusive, so most things on the resort are free, but the Maya Mall also has a few things that you'll need to pay extra if you want to try them out. The first is the casino, right near the front of the mall. If you're hoping for a big, glamorous Vegas-style casino, you'll probably be let down. 
It's pretty small, about the same size as the other mall stores, with a few table games and some slot machines. Nothing fancy, but you might like it if you're looking to do some gambling. They also have a haunted house, Dark World Lair of the Dead. If things have been too relaxing for you on your vacation, you can come here to get scared. If you're here with younger kids, they may be interested in a few turns on the carousel that's in the middle of the mall. Nothing too fancy, but most of the kids seem to like it. Probably the most unexpected thing that they have in the Maya Mall is an artificial skating rink where you can pretend you're ice skating. I always thought people came here to escape the cold weather and the ice back home, but it seemed to be popular with kids. As you'll see in my videos, the resort has a lot of extra cost activities like these. I never did any of them since I was so busy with all of the free stuff, so I don't know if they're worth the price. The Maya Mall also has a place I've talked a little bit about in my other videos, Strikers. The front of it is a sports bar, and the back is a bowling alley and entertainment center. It's open 24 hours a day and has air conditioning, so it's nice if you need to cool off, grab some late night food and drinks, or hang out after other things shut down. If you're looking to watch some sports in peace, there's an area with movie theater style seating with a nice big TV to watch the game. And they have a small buffet of stadium style food if you're hungry. Things like nachos, burgers, wings, popcorn, and hot dogs. If you're looking to play some games, the rest of Strikers is more of an amusement center with extra cost activities. Right in the middle of everything is the bowling alley, with six lanes available to rent in case you want to knock down some pins. Over along one of the walls, they have a big row of arcade games. Like pretty much everything in this part of Strikers, these will cost you extra if you want to play. Back behind the bowling lanes, they have a little section hidden away with a few pool tables. And then around on the other side of the bowling lanes, they have some air hockey tables and foosball tables, with a couple of giant pool tables on the floor in the corner. I don't think I've ever seen those before. They even have a mini golf course outside that you can get to from Striker's side door. It's free if you want to play during the day, but you have to pay to play at night. Just like the rest of the Maya Mall, Strikers gives you a lot of options for extra cost activities in case you're looking for something different. The other shopping area is the Plaza Mexicana. It's right next to the Maya Mall attached to the Colonial Hotel and tries to bring the Mexican market experience to the resort. The Barcelo Maya Grand is around 30 minutes from Playa del Carmen, so a lot of people may not have the time or interest in visiting a Mexican city. So that means they'd miss out on a really fun thing to do while they're there, shopping in a Mexican market. The Plaza Mexicana tries to give you all of the market experiences that a tourist may want. Talkative salespeople trying to lure you over to their stalls, all sorts of different trinkets and souvenirs, and the fun of negotiating the prices. It's kind of like a theme park version of a real market. They have a few rows of little market stalls towards the front of the plaza, surrounded on the sides by some small brick and mortar stores. The middle part of the market turns into a bunch of tent style stalls surrounded by a beautiful central fountain. The stuff for sale in these tents seem to be mostly clothing and beach gear and purses and sunglasses and things like that. But most of them sold a little bit of everything so you can buy similar souvenirs to what they were selling up front. And just like most of the real Mexican markets I've been to, plenty of knockoff designer goods here in case you're looking for the fake luxury look. Off to the side is Jaguars, the Barcelo Maya's nightclub, in case you're looking for some nighttime entertainment. Towards the rear of the market, it was mostly a mixture of brick and mortar stores with a few jewelry stalls in the middle. All of the stalls and stores gave a lot of different options for things to buy. If you're looking for some souvenirs from your trip, you'll have plenty of options as you wander around the Plaza Mexicana. One thing I noticed is that everything seemed to be a little overpriced. I found the stores in Playa del Carmen had the same things for a cheaper price, and even the Playa del Carmen prices are high by Mexican standards. So the Plaza Mexicana is more about the market experience and less about the good prices you normally get at markets. But it has more than just shopping, with a few other things that might make you want to visit. Sometimes they have Mayan performers posing around the central fountain. There's also an on-site medical clinic and pharmacy here, with a doctor available 24 hours a day. And if you run into any issues, they have their own ambulance to take you to the hospital. 
If you're religious, they have a little chapel on the edge of the market away from the shops. It's in a beautiful location with a completely open air layout where the chapel is on its own little circular island surrounded by fountain pools. And they hold Catholic mass there on Sundays. Overall, the Plaza Mexicana is a pretty fun place and an interesting resort experience. I definitely recommend that you go to a real market in an actual Mexican city if you can, but if you can't, this will at least give you the theme park version of the experience so you can get a taste of it yourself. In the middle of the resort is a big red building that has the resort's fitness center and spa. The fitness center is the free gym that anyone at the resort can use, and the U Spa has a bunch of different add-on services that you can buy if you're interested. It has a pretty good selection of different spa services like massage and hydrotherapy treatments and a beauty salon and things like that. They even have a kid's spa too so they can join in. I was worried the gym would be small like at most hotels, but it was actually pretty big with a good selection of workout gear to choose from. If you'd rather do your workouts outside, near the Colonial Hotel they have a section filled with courts for different sports that you can play while you're here. They have basketball courts and paddleball courts and tennis courts, and even a little hut where you can get water, towels, and any gear you need to play. And if that's not enough for you, over by the Tropical Hotel they have a full-size soccer field. Yeah, not just a net and some grass, a full field. I've shown you around a lot of the resort, and one of the things that you've probably noticed is that there are trees and gardens and nature everywhere. And that means you're going to be seeing wild animals all over the resort. I thought this was so great, since the animals I saw were so different than the ones I see back home. Lizards were definitely the most common. It seemed like pretty much every day I'd run into one or two relaxing in the grass or walking down the paths. There were even some little mammals hiding in the bushes too. And the resort had a guy with a big bird that would go around scaring the smaller birds away from the pool area. I really loved that the resort kept such a natural design, almost like you're in a Mexican jungle, since it meant that there were so many nice animals to see as I was exploring the Barcelo Maya. I keep telling you how big this resort is, so you're probably wondering how people get from one side to the other. If you don't feel like walking, there's a resort bus you can take. The buses are open top double deckers, so you can enjoy the fresh air as you drive around. Personally, I like walking so I almost never used it, but I did take a few nighttime rides on the bus to see the resort from a different perspective. There are actually two different buses that go on different routes, both of which start and end on the little stretch of road between the Plaza Mexicana and the Maya Mall. The first one does a loop that stops out front of the lobbies of the Colonial, Tropical, and Palace Hotels. The second one does the other half of the resort and takes you to the Carib, Beach, and Riviera hotels. Because it's two separate routes, that does mean that you need to switch buses in the middle if you want to go from one side of the resort to the other. They run along the private road that connects the entire resort. As you drive along it, you can see the various lobbies and hotel buildings, some of the resort attractions, and a few monuments that they have along the road. If you're interested in taking the bus, just wait outside any of the hotel lobbies or in front of the Maya Mall, and eventually one of the buses will pull up. They ran fairly regularly, so you probably won't have to wait more than 10 or 15 minutes for one to come. When you factor in the time it takes to wait for the bus, possibly having to switch buses halfway through your trip, and then walking from wherever you're dropped off to where you actually want to go, I found it was always faster to just walk there myself. But if anyone in your group has mobility issues or you don't want to get lost, the bus can be a big help. So that's it! I've shown you some of the interesting places that you'll want to check out around the Barcelo Maya and some of the things you can do while you're there. The resort was so big that it took me days to get around to all of the different parts to check everything out. Mostly, I would walk around and explore whenever I'd been sitting by the pool for too long or eating too much great food and needed to stretch my legs. But I really liked that they had all of these different things around for me to see. It almost felt like the Barcelo Maya was its own little town. And I guess it kind of is when you consider how many thousands of guests and employees are there every day and the overall size of the resort. Don't forget, if you want to see anything else about the Barcelo Maya, check out my other videos. Links to them are in the video description. In part one, I show you the different hotels that make up the resort, walk around their buildings, and take you on a tour of my room. 
In part two, I take you out into the sunshine and walk around the huge pools the resort has and walk down the nearly two kilometer long beach. Part three is all about the food options you'll have, from the buffets to the beach grills to the a la carte restaurants to the snack bars. In part four, I talk about all of the different bars they have, the evening entertainment, and the resort's nightlife options. In the next part, I'll talk about some of the fun water activities you can do, like snorkeling with wild sea turtles at the beach, and other adventure activities they have on the resort. Then later, I'll show you some really great nearby places on the Yucatan Peninsula in case you want to spend some time off resort. If you have any questions about all of the places I showed you today, or anything else about the Barcelo Maya Grand, ask me in the comments. While you're at it, like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. On Instagram, I'm firsthand globe trotting. On Twitter, I'm firsthand globe. Follow me on there. And don't forget, it's an incredible world out there, so pick up your passport and do some firsthand globe trotting of your own.